Okay, I just wanted to take a second to show y'all some of these molecules we've been talking about in three dimensions with our molecular modeling kits. So this is a CH4. So you can see the carbon there and the tetrahedral covalent bonds it forms with those hydrogens. Next, I want you to look at this alcohol. So you can see the two carbons in black with the three hydrogens, the second carbon with two, and that alcohol group on the end, the oxygen and hydrogen there. There is an isomer that has two carbons, six hydrogens, and an oxygen, and that is this here. So you can see, same number of atoms of each type, different arrangement, that's what makes it an isomer. Next, water, H2O. Water is simply an oxygen and two hydrogens. You can see the bend that allows that oxygen to carry well, the bend doesn't allow it, but with that bend, the oxygen would be more negatively charged, the hydrogen's more positively charged. CO2. Now, why doesn't CO2 have a bend whenever we draw it? Well, that is because the carbon is double bonded to those oxygens. So that is a double covalent bond on both sides of the carbon, forming a linear, nonpolar molecule, and remember that molecule is not organic. All right, let's get those out of the way. We'll take a look at an aldehyde. So here is an aldehyde. It has a double bond to that oxygen on one end of the molecule. If that was in the middle, so we just take this methyl group off here, exchange it with the hydrogen. Now what we have is a very simple ketone molecule. So it was an aldehyde, now it's a ketone. Carboxyl groups, very similar to an aldehyde except that there is an alcohol group in place of that hydrogen. So you have two oxygens, very electronegative part of this molecule, very polar, and that is your carboxyl group or carboxylic acid. If you were to take that alcohol from before, and the acid, alcohol plus acid, you're going to get water. Through a dehydration synthesis or condensation reaction and you will create an ester linkage. So there is your ester group so a double bonded oxygen, an oxygen single covalently bonded to two different carbons. That is your ester linkage. All right, so let's get this all out of the way. Lastly, I want to show you some things about fatty acids. So here are two sample fatty acids. You can see they both have the acid group on the end. One is unsaturated. So if you look at it closer up, you can see all of those, those white pegs on the ends are hydrogens, then our acid group. And it's very linear compared to this molecule which has the double bond there and it causes it to bend. Now that is 
the way natural unsaturated fatty acids arrange themselves. This is called a cis configuration because you have the hydrogens coming off the same side of that double bond. Trans fats are partially hydrogenated fats that coerce those cis bonds into trans bonds where you have a hydrogen off of two different directions. So you've got one going that way and one going this way. And that is linear, just like a saturated fatty acid, making it behave like a saturated fatty acid. But it is more dangerous. That, that hydrogenation process, it's not quite as stable. This is not how double bonded fatty acids exist in nature, um, but that is our trans fat and that's all we're going to go into with that.